Hello, everybody. I'm here to talk to you today about an exciting topic to me, progressive web apps. Uh, if you haven't heard the hype already, I, by the end of this presentation, I hope you guys will understand why there's so much hype behind progressive web apps. Um, so today, we're going to talk about what is a progressive web app, uh, what are the benefits of a PWA for short. I'm not going to say progressive web app 40 times. Uh, how to turn your React app into a PWA, and of course answer a question that I had when I first began exploring this topic. Uh, progressive Web Apps was first introduced by Google in 2015. <laughs> Since then it has gotten a lot of traction, uh, pretty much supported by all browsers except Safari. Uh, it provides app-like features to your browser, so it combines the best of both worlds, and we're going to get a little bit more into that later on. Uh, framework support right now is in React, Angular, and Vue.js. Vue.js. So all this is made possible. Wait a minute. Sorry about that little technical difficulty. So what is a progressive, well, no, what's the benefits of a progressive web app? Uh, it's rapid and offline loading. So if there's no internet or poor internet, you still will have a fully functional browser. Uh, it has very responsive interfaces regardless of, uh, you know, whether it's uh, small, uh, from your phone all the way to your desktop, everything, all the features work and is very fluid. Uh, it has secure online connections, it push notifications. Uh, we, most of us have Slack, and we know what that means when that little button comes up. Even though it's a web browser, it's very app-like in terms of the notification. Uh, you can add it to your home screen, even though it's a kind of HTML-based website. And, and finally, it's discoverable, meaning unlike an app, you can do a Google search for it, uh, you can just simply get a link and you're taken there to that website. Uh, so all this, the first three most importantly, like the app-like features, is made possible by one very important thing, and it is the service worker. The service worker is a, an event-based worker that sits between your page and your site, uh, kind of intercepting and hijacking requests that's made from your site uh, to your HTML page. Uh, because of this, it needs to be secure, so that's where that secure feature comes in. Uh, and also, uh, so here's some code to, uh, to get your um, service worker started. If you, can, if you notice, there it's wrapped in a conditional. This is kind of a best practice. In case your browser doesn't support service workers, this conditional, of course, will prevent a service worker from being activated. This is a simple fetch request. If there's, inter if there's no internet, as you can see here, there'll be a picture of Dr. Evil and a message that comes up. Uh, so it's a very just simple little thing, but it does enhance the user experience when you can personalize messages, even when you don't have internet to it. Uh, I mean, don't have internet currently. And right now, this is the service worker loads in a PRPL uh, pattern for structuring and serving data. Uh, also coined offline loading first. Uh, as soon as you enter the internet, it will store whatever crucial information possible into your cache. So next time you visit, it would immediately load what it can from that cache. So be it the nav bar, the app shells, um, some, some sites like New York Times will load the most up-to-date uh, text articles. So even if you don't have internet, the second time you visit, you still have a good experience. You still can navigate around the site and uh, basically use the site like if it was a, a functioning app. And this is a basic code to declare your cache and to set it. Uh, once you, of course, start storing more cache and how you interact with it, it, gets a, it tends to get a little bulky. And for web browsers, it's stored in application cache. There's an index DP API, uh, kind of it's very similar to Promise, but they have their own ver uh, version of Promise. So some people uh, tend to not like it because of that. Web SQL all allows a web desktop to store up to 500 megabytes in their cache. Uh, mobile right now is only up to 5 megabytes. I believe users can set the range themselves, but unfortunately, developers cannot do that themselves. At this moment, you've learned about cache, learned about service workers. There is just one more thing before you can turn your React into a fully functional PWA, and that's a web manifesto. Uh, it's a simple JSON file that will declare your, uh, I believe, your icon, your URLs, and your messages. Uh, it pretty much allows you to download that website onto your home screen. Uh, this is the screen, as you can see. Uh, so it declares the, the title, declares the URL, some images, some backgrounds, and navbar colors, basic stuff. 
of course, the functional, like because of the PWAs, uh, the websites load insanely fast. Insanely fast websites leads to better user experience and much more uh, better interactiveness. And these are some of like the top perks, but then you can find more um, top stats. And then you can find more of the stats on uh, pwastats.com if you guys are interested. There are a lot of cool stats in terms of how much the website has seen improvements once it changed over to a PWA. But there are, of course, some drawbacks. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is no support from iOS, but you can run it on a iOS, uh, for instance, iPhone. It works still just as fast. Uh, it is harder to build because you're not dealing with the flat static website anymore. You do have a lot of interactiveness, and if you're going to boast that, uh, it better be good, and it's going to be a little challenging to uh, make that kind of website. Sometimes it's too progressive, meaning there are some browsers that might not support some features of a progressive web app. And finally, it can cache too much data or unwanted data. For instance, I believe there's a Pokedex website, which is really cool. It shows all the Pokemon that's ever been created in like kind of like a cool Pokemon uh, Pokedex setting. But that means as soon as you log on to that website, you do down cache a lot of data, which for some people, that is not enjoyable. And for me, uh, when I first started looking at uh, progressive web apps, there's always a why not just use a native app? It sounds exactly like an app. What's the difference? And uh, for, for a time, I was prepared to deliver an argument about why a PWA is way better than a native app. Had some graphs to show uh, the retention, I mean, the decline of apps and so on. But after listening to a uh, speaker, Jason Grisby, co-founder of Cloud4, talk about progressive web apps, he did bring up a very good point that it's ultimately not a, not really a, a, a versus, it's more of, you know, choosing the right platform to deliver the best user experience. So there is a graph I do want to show, which is this graph. And a lot of, you can see that a lot of people spend a lot of time on their apps, but the main, the initial contact to any, to any, you know, domain is usually on a website. So there are still a lot of people that, you know, have to use websites to see exactly what's going on. And for us, uh, as, as, you know, as students of full stack, we always try to deliver the best user experience possible, and PWAs are the hands-down best user experience on a uh, website. So thank you guys, and uh, that's it.